You may have received a message from Battle.net saying that your old authenticator will be deprecated and now you will have to use a Battle.net mobile app and set up a new OTP authentication from there. So basically they are forcing you to install their Battle.net app on your phone. Most users will just shrug it off. They already have lots of applications, each for a specific service. There is a PlayStation Network application on their phone, there is a Steam application on their phone, and now there will be a Battle.net. No big deal. And actually, to a certain extent, using a separate device, which is a smartphone, for authentication on another device, such as a computer, may be beneficial for this category of users, because when their PC will become compromised and their account stolen because they were lured by free skins on some shady website, at least their authenticator will not be compromised since it's on a separate device. And for average person nowadays, a smartphone is essential. They are okay with using their phone numbers as logins, since in this case they don't have to remember passwords, because if they forget it, a new password will be sent to them via text message. They are okay to use the same login and password for all websites, including their email, which is their login, and that means that if one of those websites will be compromised, a hacker can gain access and take over all of their accounts. And that is exactly why they are constantly locked out of everything. For example, if they used their Facebook account to log into different websites, they may lose access to all of those sites if Facebook decides to ban their account or they have trouble logging into their Facebook or Instagram or Google or whatever. They are okay to use a separate app for each and every separate service or website and they will lose this access if their phone or SIM card is stolen and every time they decide to change their smartphone to a different model or even just to factory reset the existing one, they typically lose their authenticators because they didn't care to back them up. But it's okay for them to have a very poor IT hygiene, but it's not okay for me. I am not okay with using apps for each and every service, especially when there is a working website. Some services don't have a website, or the website functionality is so crippled that you are forced to use the app, which has more options. However, personally, I never use shopping apps. Every marketplace has them. Not only AliExpress or Amazon or eBay or other big retailers, but also brick-and-mortar shops have their apps. I prefer to use the website, because the apps are just not convenient enough. You cannot open several tabs with offers of products you're interested in to compare them later, and in most cases, the apps are electron-based browsers anyway. So what's the point of having an app? And I definitely don't use my phone to run Authenticator app, for many reasons. The first one is in some cases I would need a separate app for each and every service, like in this case for Steam, for Battle.net and other game services, I would need to install a separate app. I also have several different accounts on the same services, for example, several Facebook accounts, several Steam accounts, and so on. And even though the Steam app, for example, supports several accounts, it is a little bit tricky to use. And also, I just don't feel like punching in the code, because if you have your authenticator on the phone, that means that you will need to manually type in the code that the phone displays onto your computer or game console or whatever. It is also a little bit harder, at least for me, to make backup copies of authenticator apps on the phone, even those that do support multiple services in one app. And the most important thing, I don't have to worry that if my phone breaks and I will have to replace it or send it to repairs, or I lose it, or it is stolen, and nowadays, your smartphone has the highest probability of being stolen, lost, or broken, because you carry it around everywhere. You are less likely to lose your wallet or your keys than your smartphone, especially if you use your smartphone for payment as a wallet and as a fob to open doors with electronic locks. 
And if I lose my smartphone, I will not have to worry that all the authenticators are still there in the smartphone, which I don't have access to anymore. And I will have to reattach the authenticators to each and every account I use them on. And I use an authenticator on dozens of accounts. Basically, I use it on every service that supports OTP authentication. What I do use is authentication apps on the computer. I daily drive Linux, but I also sometimes use Windows, so I have authenticator apps for both of those systems. As I said, it may be a little bit less secure to have your authenticator on the same machine as you're trying to log in. It is better to keep it on separate devices. However, I keep my authenticators password protected and also store them on encrypted storage. And I do regular backups of the entire app because they are portable, which gives me peace of mind. So back to the Battle.net Authenticator. The previous Battle.net Authenticator, they call it Legacy now, showed you the secret code, which allowed you to basically use any authenticator software. And it is important to understand that most authenticators for most services and websites use the same algorithm. It's TOTP authentication, usually with SHA-1 or SHA-512. The stubborn one was Twitch. It used the proprietary software for authentication, but even Twitch has changed to this standard TOTP protocol a few years back. And since the authenticators use the same protocol, you can use a single software that supports all of your services. There are quite a few options, for example, Google Authenticator or and OTP for Android, WinAuth for Windows, OTP Client for Linux, and many, many others. You can use this single app to host all your authenticators for all services. And another important thing to understand, you can use the same secret key in all of those apps. And you can use multiple apps with the same secret key for a specific service or website simultaneously, and they all will be generating the correct one-time password code. The problem with the new Battle.net is that the mobile app doesn't show you the secret code. Moreover, in the FAQ section, they specifically say that you can use only one authenticator tied to only one mobile number, so you will also need a phone number, and you cannot transfer it. Turns out it's not quite true, and I will show you how to extract the secret key that is supposed to be used with the new Battle.net Mobile Authenticator and use this secret key in any authentication software of your choice. What you need to do is first log into your Battle.net account in the browser. I'm still using the legacy authenticator and I use OTP client in Linux to generate the one-time password. Then, once you have logged in, go to your account settings and make sure that you have a phone number set up. You may detach it later, but as of now, just in case, have your number set up. Then go to security and detach your legacy authenticator. You will be asked to enter yet another OTP code from the authenticator. After you have detached your Battle.net authenticator from your account, do not log out and open another tab in your browser. In this tab, go to Blizzard website, which hosts official Battle.net Authenticator REST API. Here, you need to click the Authorize button. It will ask you for client ID. The client ID is the same for everyone. Enter this and also make sure that you have ticked Auth Authenticator Authenticator and then click Authorize. In some cases, you may be required to enter your password again on the Battle.net website. So do that and go back to that uh, Swagger UI tab. Here, don't log out, click close for now. Then scroll down until you see the post method, which says create and add a brand new authenticator. Click on it to expand the options, then click try it out, and then click execute. If everything is okay, below you will see the server response with code 200, and in the response body, you will see three very important things. First of all, the serial of the authenticator that has been just created, then the restore code, both of which you will need to detach the authenticator, and last but not the least, the device secret. 
This is the secret code for the authenticator that we have been after. I suggest you copy all of that and store it somewhere secure, and you may also want to print it out, so you also have a hard copy. After that, you can click Authorize again and click Log Out. The secret code that the Battle.net API provided is in hexadecimal, while most authenticators will require a base32 string. So all we need to do is to open any hex to base32 converter, for example, this online one, paste your hex string, and you will have an output in base32. You will also need to copy this base32 string. This is the secret code that you will need to paste to your authenticator to set it up. In my case, all I needed to do is just to edit the battle.net string in my OTP client and change the secret key for the legacy authenticator that I have just detached to the new one in base32 format, which I have just received. After I did that, I could continue to use the OTP client to log into battle.net without the need to install the battle.net mobile app, which shows that battle.net actually changed nothing they are still using the same OTP protocol as everyone else and as they themselves were using before. And I find it strange that they call the old authenticator legacy one, even though it's exactly the same as the new one. They are just forcing you to use their Battle.net application for your phone to pedal more battle passes, more skins and stuff like that to you. That's probably their main intention, and there may be a second thought that this should probably limit the amount of cheaters, since now you will need a new phone number to create an authenticator-protected Battle.net account. And probably they're also trying to make it more tedious to set up multiple accounts for farming, because you will need several mobile phone numbers and several phones to actually run the authenticator, unless you're using virtual phone numbers and Android emulators. Okay, Linux is great, but almost none of the Battle.net games run on Linux natively, so I need something for Windows. The previous authenticator worked just fine with WinAuth software. Basically, this is the Windows version of OTP client, and I use WinAuth to store all my authenticators to everything, to Steam, to Google, to Facebook, to other websites, including Battle.net. I tried to create a new Battle.net authenticator inside WinAuf, but the problem is the app has not been updated for quite a while. The author abandoned it, and no one picked up his project, and even though it still generates an OTP, the problem is it generates only 6 digits, while Battle.net expects 8 digits, which is totally within specs of TOTP protocol, but anyway. So now I need something to host my authenticators under Windows. I asked the author of OTP Client if he is willing to make a Windows version as well, and he is not. In the past, I also asked him to pack OTP Client as an app image, which is a portable app format for Linux, and he also declined. And at this point, I'm done with OTP Client. I've been using it for about three years, because there is no Linux alternative, but now I am done with it. I understand that the creator of the app doesn't have an obligation to do anything. This is an open source software, and if the author doesn't want to add new features or doesn't have time for it or whatever, you can either evolve it yourself by cloning the source code and creating your own app, or you have to find an alternative. And I did find an alternative. Apparently, KeyPass XC which is an open source fork of KeyPass, which is a proprietary software, and it is mostly known for being a password manager. Remember I said in the beginning that most folks will use the same login and the same password for all websites, which compromises the security quite a bit. KeyPass will sort it out for you. It not only generates a separate password for each website, it also stores them in a secure manner, so you don't have to remember them. Anyway, apparently, it also has OTP functionality. And all you need to do is to create a new database for OTP. If you are already using KeyPass, you can use the same database, 
but from security standpoint, it is better to use a separate database inside KeePass and also protect it with a separate password. Anyway, you use the database, create an entry, for example, Battle.net, and then right click on it and set up OTP. Here, you have to enter your secret code and you will also need to customize the settings and increase the amount of digits that the authenticator generates from the standard six to eight. That's what Battle.net expects. Save the settings and you are done. You can now use KeePass to generate the authenticator codes for Battle.net and use them to log in to Battle.net just fine. Since there is a portable version of KeePass for both Linux as an app image and the Windows as a portable app, I can now use the same KeePass database from both Linux and Windows. And since they are portable apps, I can keep them on a secure encrypted drive and also back up that drive easily. And as I said, you can use the same secret code in any number of authenticators. The Battle.net account will still be the same, but sharing the secret allows you to use different authentication software for it simultaneously. So to log in into your Battle.net account, you can use KeePass, you can use OTP client, you can use, I don't know, edges, whatever. If you enter the same secret code into all of them, they will be generating exactly the same correct OTP code that you can use to log in to the same account. I am the god of YouTube. Like, subscribe, thanks. Jingle bells.